Good morning, everybody. Now we will talk about the uh, second uh, case in ICU round. Uh, this patient developed, um, uh, she is known sickler, uh, post part of she developed severe uh, respiratory distress and admitted here because of severe respiratory distress and predicted to mechanical ventilations. Now we'll start uh, assessment of respiratory distress by our protocol for, uh, for this year. Number one, <coughs> we'll try to get the inferior vena cava, as you see. I will get the lever after that right side. I will get the inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava seems to be uh, on high side. Yeah, yeah, this is, I will measure just approximate to hepatic uh, vein. There is there some trigger breath from the patient. But yeah, you, the, you, you see here, it could be in the in 1.9 of our normal. With this trigger breath, this is a small diameter. Yeah. We are talking about, yeah, for this patient, we are talking about CBB of 10, okay? Next, I will go to <coughs> the heart to know the clue for this inferior vena As you see here, <coughs> this is a long axis bar server view of the patient. You see here, patient is tachycardic. There is dilated right uh, ventricle. And as you see here, uh, kissing left ventricle. And there is uh, septal dyskinesia because of this hypertrophy, meximitus uh, mitral valve. I will put the patient now in the short axis view. I will do short axis view. As you see here, this patient has balloon in the right side with flattening of the septum. And as you see here, there is D-shaped of left ventricle denoting uh, uh, septal dyskinesia and pressure overload. I will <coughs> save this sign and I, will, I need to see is it pressure overload or volume and pressure overload. This is, this is in systole. Eccentricity index, as you see here, the diameter here is more than here, okay? That means there is definite septal flattening in systole and there is pressure overload. What about the volume overload? As you see here in, in, in diastole, as you see, the ventricle try to be circular. That means it's mainly pressure overload. So I have now, a dilated right ventricle because of pressure overload. Is this pressure due to acute event of pulmonary embolism, which is expected in this scenario, or it is due to chronic process of the core pulmonal or of the uh, left side uh, uh, failure affecting the right side with pulmonary hypertension? How can we get this? It's very easy. We need to know very important thing. First, if it's acute event with acute right ventricular strain, pressure overload, this right ventricle will fail because right ventricle has thin wall, cannot tolerate the acute stress and the acute pressure overload. So you will see this right ventricle with poor contractility and with what's called the McConnell signs. In lateral free wall, you will see the right ventricle. <clears throat> lateral free wall is not moving compared to the apex. Okay, let us see. We, we get this, as you see here, this is, as you see, ballooning right side compared to the left side. You see here, maybe thrombus moving here inside the right ventricle. And I will try to get good position. You see here, the apex is hyperkinetic compared to okay. you see here the apex is hyperkinetic compared to the lateral wall. You see here apex is hyperkinetic compared to the lateral wall. Can I know the contractility of the lateral wall? The good contractility of the lateral wall? Before I will do that, I need to measure the Tricasmid regage at the pulmonary hypertension. I will put color here. You see, very clear tricasmid regage. I will put continuous wave Doppler. I will measure. I will freeze. I will measure tricasmid regage to maximum to get 
ذا برمر هايبر تنشن هير 32 ويل اد 10 اوف انفيور فينا كابا ذات مينز اتس 42 ذات مينز ذا بيشنت هاز مايلد برمر هايبر تنشن ويتش از جوينج ويز اكيوت ايفنت بيكوز ذيس فينتريكل اف ات از افكتد اكيوتلي ويز سيفير بريشر اور نوت اكيوت ايفنت ويل نوت جيت ذا تايم تو جينيريت بريشر اند تو كونتراكت ويل سو يو ويل فايند هير البرمر هايبر تنشن In the mild side, I will measure the contractility of right ventricle now by what's called TAPSI. I will measure the the vertical movement of the right ventricle. Now, general, because this will determine the function of the right ventricle. Okay, as you see here, it's 1.4. That means this right ventricle vertical movement is poor. TAPSI is poor. Treward is not moving well. And the apex is moving well, and we have by the pulmonary hypertension, we have thrombus moving inside. All is going with a case of acute core pulmonary. Right now, this is a case of acute core pulmonary. Now I need to know the patient blood pressure in the borderline. <clears throat> Can I give fluids or not give fluids in this patient with the lower right side? If I give fluids, it, it may. Compress the uh, left side more, as you see here. If I give fluids for this patient, it may increase the uh, size of right ventricle and will uh, compress more left ventricle and will decrease the stroke volume. So let us uh, have, have a look on the stroke volume of this patient. What's called the VTI. This is now left ventricle. This is five chamber view. And this is aorta, aorta called flow tract. I will try to determine left ventricular flow tract. Okay. This is a five chamber view. I will put the sample volume here in the left ventricular flow tract. I will determine this left ventricular flow tract VTI. This is the surrogate of the, uh, of the stroke volume. This is a surrogate of stroke volume. Uh, you can consider it stroke volume. It's normal from 20 to 25. For this patient with severe right ventricular strain and the pressure overload and the compressed left side, I will not expect it to be in normal. Okay? I will get here. Get into the throat tract. I will do manual. I will try to get one from here. And try to measure it. Okay. It is in the. Uh, it is 10. Definitely it is uh, low. In this patient, I am giving fluids. In this patient, I am giving fluids 120 cc per hour. And the patient almost lost the balance about one liter. I am suspicious now. Can I give more fluids? But this will be expense on the left side. Definitely. This is the dilemma. I will give fluids to increase the VTI. If I increase the VTI, is the increase of the VTI is really affecting the microcirculation? In our ICU, in this scenario, with very tricky patient, which risk benefit cannot be uh, determined in proper way, we usually rely on the what is I, mean, uh, I mentioned before, future treatment of choke. In this patient, I will go directly to the uh, vital organs and I will see if this vital organ is well nourished or not well nourished. If it is well nourished, I will maintain the blood pressure. I will not give any IV fluids, uh, uh, even if the stroke volume is not uh, too much. Because this stroke volume is compensated, uh, low stroke volume is compensated by tachycardia, which maintain a cardiac output. So I will go directly now to the microcirculation of the vital organ to determine if this vital organ is nourished, well nourished or not. طبعا with lactate, with following lactate. I will now use the adult abdomen bro. I will check the kidney. This is the left kidney. She is pregnant. If you, you, you see some fullness of the calcial system because of pregnant. I will fire the color flow here. As you see here, I will see the color. And for me, this kidney is well perfused. Can I get an objective parameter of this? I will try. But this kidney, at least the blood supply will reach it to the end. I will put pulsed wave on this uh, renal uh, branches, renal artery branches. Okay. 
I will get balsam and dobla. This is a kidney, I will fire the ball because I will put the fire balls wave in the real artery. I will okay. I will determine now what's called ball steel the index. This is a real artery. I will get uh, segmental branch, I will get uh, manual, I will take a maximum here. I will take the end of the stool. The machine will determine. Now, the CP index is 0.74. It's mild, it's stressed. This kidney is mild, it's stressed because of uh, uh, hypoperfusion, because of this acute overload. Okay, but I should check it in another vascular bed. I can take the value of several leading. Normal is 0.7. Okay, I will measure it now. This is barbell steel in the left side. This is the segmental artery. I will use manual. I will take the maximum velocity over the end of the serve velocity and the machine 0.71. So this patient, more than 0.75, that means there is severe uh, uh, stressful hypoperfusion. Uh, 0.7 and below is normal. This patient from 0.71 to 0.74, there is some uh, limitation in the perfusion. We can consider that, but let us look for another vascular bit. What's important here as regard vital organ, we have a transcranial doubler to see the perfusion of the brain. I will, this is a Mickey Mouse Alira Supreme step. I will fire a color. I will try to get a middle cerebral artery. This is a middle cerebral artery. Okay. This is a middle cerebral artery. Okay. I will do what's still at the index. So it's a middle cerebral artery. The same, all these vital organs, as you see here, the systolic velocity and diastolic velocity, almost 50% and diastolic, almost 50% of systolic because these vital organs need blood supply in both systole and diastole. Not like a non-vital organ which has triphasics with reverse of diastolic flow in diastole. So, as you see here, the brain hardly, this is the left side, middle cerebral artery. I will auto, void auto, I will get the big systolic velocity and the end of velocity here. Okay, this is Balsiltin is 1.05. Yeah, it's within normal limits because uh, as you see, it's from one and below. So there is very mild impairment of the perfusion of these organs. We can give uh, one bolus of IV fluids now to 150 and the re-measures again in VTI and as long as this microvascular circulation to be in the proper way. I believe this microvascular circulation is very important because this is a blood flow of the, of the brain now. As you see here, it's still it is low uh, resistance circulation, it still is good diastolic flow. Yani, if hatta I will repeat again to get another uh, value. Here you see Mickey Mouse appearance in the brain. In front here, you will see this is a spheroid wing. Here you will find the little cerebral artery. You can get it. Here you will find the little cerebral artery. You will put two pulse to it. Okay. I will measure again because I need uh, several reading and it will take a the average of this reading. Auto, I will put in big systole and end the stole. It's 0.95. So, the brain for this patient is not affected. The kidney is mildly affected. So, I can increase the IV flows from 120 to 1. 
30 and I can give short policies so I have read 200 but at least I know uh, things going in the right way because I am not only considering the PTI but I am considering also the perfusion of the vital organ which is very important. Uh, I believe this is new idea but this is uh, our uh, management here in ICU for shock for several years and I believe it is very helpful for anyone using uh, critical care after cell. Thank you all. Good morning everybody. Uh, this patient with massive pulmonary embolism, we uh, really uh, we were cautious for IV fluids. We keep the balance of one liter positive. Uh, blood pressure was maintained, the mean pressure always above uh, 65. Uh, today we need to check the vital organs uh, perfusion after this. Uh, really, we have uh, 24 hours. Okay, this is the left kidney, and I will fire the color uh, flow. Color flow is doing very well for the patient. I will try to detect the pulsed wave of Great. Uh, yesterday the uh, RI was 0.74. Today is 0.52. Great, great, really. Because the perfusion, the vital organ has a very good capability, capability to compensate. We should, we should do it several times to take the average. Okay. okay. This is a Doppler study of the renal vessels, which is vital organ. And you see here, the historic flow is very great compared to the historic flow, almost 50% of the historic flow. And by measuring, this is interlobal artery. I will make it uh, auto. Okay, this. Okay, good. 0.6. So, yeah, definitely we have now very good perfusion of the kidneys. And what about the brain? Now we need to. Uh, just, uh, last time the perfusion of the brain, uh, PI was <coughs> almost 1 yesterday. After these uh, good days of management, we need to check the. TCD of the left ventricle. <coughs> this is the brain stem. This is the left viral color. Okay. Increase the scale. This is a <coughs> pulsed wave doubler of the middle left vestibular artery. Uh, yesterday it was one, the pulsed index, which uh, pulsed index denote the perfusion, the, the, uh, the quality of cerebral circulation as a lower distance circulation. This is the left, this is the middle cerebral artery. I will make it auto. I will measure this is a big stool. This is the end of the stool. Okay, it is 0.91, definite, it's okay, it's improving, definite improving compared to yesterday. So, vital organs now is doing very good with the management. We didn't give a lot of fluids. I, we need to check now what about the DTI of the patient <clears throat> as a surrogate of the micro, uh, macro circulation. Okay, this is the aorta. Yesterday it was nine. Today is it is, it is uh, eleven point five. That's okay. We are going in the right track. Inshallah, will be okay. Thank you. Today we will uh, we are toward one. Today we'll assess the right ventricular and the inferior vena cava for this patient with massive pulmonary 
uh, on bullets. Now, as you see here, the patient situated, alhamdulillah, situated yesterday. As you see here, the يعني, inferior vena cava is amazing. It started to collapse. Amazing inferior vena cava. MashaAllah. Okay, we'll see the, the four chamber view and we'll assess the tapsy. Because tapsy is very important uh, for function of the right ventricle, which is the most important in patient with acute corporal nerve. As you see here, still the right side uh, is dilated compared to the left side, still dilated compared to the left side. But uh, in vertical movement is amazing, again. it's very good. It's very good uh, vertical movement of the right ventricle. I will do the tapsy. Amazing, and the last time it was 1.4. Now we are talking about distance. We are talking about this one 2.1. 2.1. That means the right ventricle improved a lot. Improved a lot. The right ventricle improved a lot. As you see here, the relation slightly more than the left side. We'll see the VTI today. Okay. VTI today is very important to assess it. It was uh, 9, after that 11. Okay. Yesterday it was 11, today it was Seem to be good today. Mashallah, now you are talking about him. Can you are talking about him? Uh, can now today it's approaching to 14 and 13 plus. Yeah, is that good? That means the patient recanalized. The patient recanalized. Can you see the pulmonary hypertension? This is the tricuspid valve. I will put continuous with Doppler to assess the tricuspid valve. Okay, measurement, tricuspid valve. Maximum velocity. Maximum velocity, I'm talking about 24. And with this inferior vena cava, with this inferior vena cava, very narrow, we are talking about 5. Uh, now, with pulmonary hypertension, it's almost surface. No pulmonary hypertension now. Now, mashallah, she is cleared. She is fit to be transferred, inshallah. Okay, thank you.